yeah. So I'm really enjoying this game. Uh, it really does track a lot of stuff, like like Krieg's problems. Like, for example, I'm in like a ninety percent female dominated work environment, and yeah, the whole like you know, girls standing by you and like you know, like <laughs> I get this sometimes. Like, I've had it from a principal once, where she was standing right next to me and looking at me with her eyes, and I was just like, you know, big eyes, and she's standing way too close, and she's like, looking at me in my eyes, and I'm just like, hello, why are you standing so close to me? And like, recently I was signing a form, and this girl was wearing a skimpy top and was trying to press herself against me and look at me with her big goo-goo eye kind of thing. And I'm just sat there like, do you want to sign this form? Because you're standing really close. <laughs> you know, so, like, what Craig's dealing with. What Craig's dealing with. And, uh... Where are you going, cat? Ah. What Craig was dealing with in that last episode. That kind of tracks as to, like, dealing with some... You know, like, to the point now for me that, like... I'm not supposed to hang out with my students, but some of my male students, uh, they say, hey man, let's just hang out, you know, if you want to go get dinner or something, it's fine. And I'm just like, yeah, man, it doesn't really matter, it's just dinner, like, you know what I mean? We just hang out, we have coffee, but I just can't do that with the female students, because then people start talking, and then it's like, I can't hang out with the female staff, because then people start talking, so, you know, and going, oh, they're in love, but if you hang out with guys, it's like... You get a bit more privacy. And, uh, you know, I can actually just have friends and talk to people. <laughs> so, anyway, while I'm... I'm going to voice it again. I got my new soy milks. <coughs> while I'm doing my afternoon word, word jumbles, I hear the mail truck pull through the cul-de-sac. I wonder if we got any coupons today. The nice mail person slides a couple of letters and a large yellow envelope through the slot. It takes a couple of tries for them to get it in. Yeah, I know that one. Hey, my coupons! <laughs> I take a closer look at the large yellow envelope. Hmm, these aren't coupons at all! I lightly knock on Amanda's door. She probably has headphones on. Amanda! She yells through the door. What? I have something for you. Kind of busy right now, can you come back later? Okay, just thought you want this big old envelope we got from HIA. <laughs> Immediately, Amanda pushes her door open. Horn Institute for the Arts? I mean, if you're busy, I can come back. <laughs> Father, please. All caps. I hand her the envelope, which she che tears open with her teeth. That's probably bad for your teeth. She doesn't seem to hear me and spits out a piece of envelope. She pulls out a letter and unfolds it. And... Suspense is killing me. This is her dream school. Amanda's face is unreadable. Come on, man. I can't believe this. Oh, honey, it's okay if you didn't... I got in. Oh. Good. I got in. Amanda tosses the letter aside and gives me a big hug. Congrats, sweetie. That's amazing. I'm so proud of you. She pulls away and looks at the letter again. Oh my god, I really can't believe I got in. Of course you got in. You're a great student. You nailed that interview and your photography is incroyable. Wait, Dad. I know this one's really expensive and it's so far away. I think for a moment. Yeah, it was one of the most expensive schools that Amanda applied to. But I know she's had her heart set on it for the longest time. It'll be tough, but we're going to make it work. Really? Well, we just downsized. We surely have some cash around. Of course. I don't even know what I do as a job. I just seem to hang out in my fucking house all day. Thanks, Dad. Okay, sweetie. Celebrating tonight. Dinner your choice wherever you want. Seriously, I don't have a job. <laughs> like, how are we doing this? Oh, cool. Amanda and I walk along the bayside, tearing into our foil-wrapped burritos. Oh, yeah, I love foil-wrapped burritos. 
from a nearby food truck. You could have chosen anywhere in Maple Bay. Cost was not a determining factor. Please, Dad, you know I'm a simple gal. Just give me a Rito with a view. Can't say I'm mad. I do love burritos. Man, I should move to Mexico. Amanda and I sit on a patch of grass and watch slips slips shale lazily through the bay. I'm not drunk, you're drunk. And the dorms are right near a bunch of cafes and there are all these galleries nearby and there's a discount if you bring a student ID and Amanda, slow down, you're gonna choke on your burrito. I know, I'm just excited. Did I mention that students get their own studio space once they're seniors? And we get all the professional photo editing software for free. Hey, that's a pretty good deal, actually, because that shit's expensive. I wish my sound engineering course gave me fucking, like, Pro Tools and Logic for free. <laughs> like, fucking hell. It's nice to see Amanda so enthusiastic about ya, but I wish she wouldn't do it between bites of her burrito. Thought I told her to chew with her mouth closed. I wonder who my roommate's gonna be. You take a survey online and they match you with someone with a similar major and interests. That's actually nice of them. They don't do that in the UK and you just get stuck with some asshole. Craig and I were. A good roommate can be a lifelong friend with simmering sexual tension throughout. But don't even get me started on bad roommates. Oh no! Just kidding, we didn't have a bad roommate. Our only other roommate was a puppy that Craig brought home one night. We spent a semester fabricating a story about our foreign exchange student who had a really bad cough that sounded exactly like a dog's bark. Carl ruled. <laughs> saying, yeah, yeah. <laughs> saying you need one. I bet I could forge one. I think I could get a rabbit or a snake or maybe both. Would the snake eat a rabbit though? This is my support snake. I think I'll leave that up to you. <clears throat> She's so excited. I don't want to disappoint her, but I need to be real for a second. So you know I had that talk with Mr. Vega. He didn't tell you about the dumb stuff. What? <laughs> what? No, what? <laughs> Don't want to put a damper on the good news, but I need you to knock it out of the park these last few months of school, okay? If you really want to go to Horns, we need that scholarship money. I know you can do it. This is like an amazing world that is really like better than the world we live in. By everyone's by and chill. Everyone has great relationships with their kids. The, the universities are actually kind of nice. There's scholarship money for everyone. Like, okay. Why are you crying? I promise I'll try harder. You look like you just were doing weed. What the hell? Pat her on the back. Think you can handle a 14 hour drive to come home for the holidays? Give me some treacherous ice roads to cross. Don't you get me started on the paranormal occurrences. <laughs> Well, it'll be worth it if I get to see you. Ah, how nice. I immediately start crying because apparently that's all I do whenever my kid is nice to me. Dad, don't cry. You were crying. Shading under your eyes looked like it. Sorry, I'm just very, 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 very proud of you. You've all grown up now. You're such a good person. I hope you know how important you are to me. Dad, stop. You're going to make me cry too. It's too late. It's happening. Dad, I can't get tears of my burrito. I gonna make it taste sad. <laughs> Pull in it for a hug. Kiss her on the forehead. Love you, kiddo. Love you too, pops. Dad tip, trust no one. Oh, hello. Dad Manda. It's me, your... Uh, Hey, I thought, I thought I already sent this.
<laughs> Good for you, dog. Oh, I've got just the thing. If you grab, head to the store and grab a real chunky milkshake, cherry licorice, and book of world jumbles that I find helpful in strenuous times such as these. What? Wouldn't that make it worse? Well, it's not for the diarrhea, milkshakes are just comforting. Why are we talking about this? <laughs> well, you should have said that! I feel like running is different. <laughs> oh, he's that guy. I'm outside right now. I'm warming up. Okay. <clears throat> Please let me see if Betty gets away with the wolves from the wolves in time to get her su suppressato wrapped cheesecake out of the oven. Well, I was going to talk to someone else, and then I picked that up and thought, why well, you message me, you know? Shave with the grain. Oh, I shave against the grain. What? <clears throat> the gym just installed these new virtual jogging treadmills. We feel like we're running outdoors. It's not like that Wii Sports Resort. <laughs> Get it. <laughs> I'm going so slow. <laughs> oh no, my BPM is fucking skyrocketing. <laughs> Why? <laughs> Why is it like the sweat, the, the spray button, and the aubergine emoji? I can just hold it, I'm mashing. Ow! Oh, I was jogging wrong. <laughs> Seriously, why is it like the dick emoji and then like the the wet emoji? <laughs> why? <laughs> Could have chosen any. This is straight up Wii Sports Resort. Fuck's going on? Oh, I'm gonna die. 150 BPM. I don't know what's a good BPM anymore. I really don't do enough cardio. I just skip every now and then. Like every day I do like 10, 15 minutes of skipping and then go and do like weightlifting and shit at my, at my home. <clears throat> Seriously, why the, why the aubergine? I don't get how this is anything like to do with anything. How long do we have to do this? I, I want to go home. <laughs> Craig! Craig! You keep making me do fitness with you. You know I'm fat. Oh man, I'm going to pass out. I'm outrunning you. Oh. Oh. Stop showing off, Craig. Some of us never do this. 
Oh look, cake. Virtual cake. Oh, S plus plus. I'm good. Way to go, wheeze. So yeah, I guess that's a side mission. Uh, talk to Hugo. Talk to Robert. Talk to Joseph. Talk to Damien. I kind of like want to get to know Matt more, and I want to get to know Hugo more. Maybe talk to Robert because I haven't spoken to him since I basically slept with him. <laughs> uh, let's go chat to Matt. Wait. I got one heart from Craig. Craig Khan. Yeah, the full name, Matt Seller. JT's no wave. Multi-instrumentalism. <laughs> Shit with subtitles. <laughs> He's a sub man, not a dub man. What's your ideal date? We go on an animal. Oh, seriously. Oh, yeah, we should adopt a cat. What do you ever leave home without? My headphones both in here and over here. I spend a lot of time thinking about where did writing commas into song titles come from and where did it go? Did we all just agree that it's a bad idea? Hmm. It's a very scene kid thing to do, <coughs> having commas in your song titles. Hey man, great getting to see you at the BBQ. Free later. We're heading. I'd be so down for that. I'm actually catching a show tonight at the Sound Garden. <laughs> it's the <a> Sound Garden. <laughs> it's a concert venue, but also a band that a lot of people listened to back when it was called cool to have Soul Patches. Fuck you, Sound Garden is still cool. Rip Chris Cornell, rip in peace. <coughs> I didn't actually listen to Soundgarden that much, but yeah. Top is playing tonight. Little indie pop punk rock. That's a lot of genres. Wow. Wait, when was the last time I went to a concert? I mentally backtracked de decades through memories of denim jean jackets and moral panic over teenagers turning to the occult. Yeah! Oh god, I had a mullet. No! <laughs> oh god, I thought it was cool! Oh god, other people thought it was cool! I remember the strange 80s prog rock I used to listen to and mentally envision all of the airbrushed bands in the parking lot. How did anyone survive the 80s? Russia cool, okay. <laughs> so, I haven't been to a concert in a long time. What do you even do? Spend most of the day pacing around the house and thinking about my relationship with coolness. I mean, I always thought I was cool. At least relative to the bunch of other dads my age. What are you doing? Amanda's at the door just getting home from school. What's up? Amanda, how do I be cool? <laughs> <clears throat> you have. You took me to one once when I was 12, remember? Oh god, I tried so hard to forget. The one where I had to camp out with you in line so you could get a good spot and then you cried and screamed the whole time. Dad, it was so much more than that, I'm not even ashamed to say it. Oh, you're not ashamed. You seem pretty ashamed when I found you all found all those drawings you made of those dancing boys kissing in your traffic. <laughs> yeah, well, you didn't even find the good shit. <laughs> anyway, you should be all set for the concert if you remember that. Just one big glittery sign, cry a lot, and you'll fit right in. It's a smaller place. I think Matt just mentioned they're a punk band. 
A DIY gutter punk, fresh, straight edge, come on dad, give me something to work with here. They post punk, proto punk, C punk, Jeremy punk. <laughs> it's Jeremy punk. <laughs> I made that one up to see if I could get away with it. They're not positive hardcore, are they? Uh, he said that they're Canadian punk. Yeah, you'll be fine. Does the idea of Canadian punk seem contradictory to you? I don't see friendship and politeness as core tenets of the punk scene. Well, punk is kind of a big genre that might not be as dangerous as you think it is. It came so much more than just counterculture rebellion. What I'm trying to say is just enjoy music. Dwang. That's it. I mean, yeah, it's not like you're gonna jump into the mosh pit or anything. Well, that's comforting. If a strange dude in a Set Your Goals hoodie offers to buy you merch, don't accept it and definitely don't go on three or four dates with him afterwards where he takes you to a nice restaurant and then forgets his wallet literally three times in a row. What? Never mind, just have a blast. <coughs> I show up to a coffee spoon at eight, what I hope is a concert appropriate attire. I see Matt out front locking the door to his shop. Hey, you made it! You didn't even change your outfit. <laughs> well, it's been a while. Yes, of course, I definitely know what I'm talking about. Ready? I was born ready. Oh, it's been a while. I haven't been to a real concert since Pet Rocks are cool. I have no idea what I'm in for. <laughs> Did your daughter make you take her to one of those boy band concerts where everybody holds signs and scream cries? How did you know? I got two lined up next month. I still can't get the glitter out of my car from the last one. Stay strong. But dude, I get to take you to your first concert in a long time. This is going to be awesome. Just hang with me, Captain, and you'll be good. The scene is super supportive. It'll be a blast. Quick question. Is this going to end also in a kiss? Because I feel like I've been kissing everyone. <laughs> like, I mean, I feel like such a slut. <laughs> Shoot. What is... Scene. Scene is bad. We forget scene existed. It's just weird because scene can describe a music scene as it pertains to a community of people who like the same genre, but also describing a genre of music no one wants. Yeah. Right? Right? Remember when metal was fucking ruined because everyone decided they needed badger haircuts for some fucking reason and then listened to shit slam music for like fucking... and then Kerrang! thought that they were cool for ruining their own genre? Like, you remember? Everyone remembers, right? Wow. <laughs> like, thanks for like... Thank God Lamb of God existed. Jesus Christ, that was a dark period. No, you don't understand what metal is, man, says skinny ketamine addict with two fucking stretches in his head. <laughs> like, oh yeah, okay, mate. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> fucking scene. <laughs> like, <laughs> you don't get it. Bring me the horizon, I gotta change the entire genre. <laughs> okay. <laughs> hey. We at the ocean are cool. <laughs> okay, where are they now? Uh, the important thing tonight is that you enjoy yourself. Come on, let's head to the show. There was straight up a period of time when I went to download and everyone was like, oh my god, Cancer Bat should be on the fucking front stage. Why are they here? And like, oh my god, why aren't all time low headlining? Because they're not that good. <laughs> they're okay. They're pretty entertaining, actually. But, like, holy, when I saw them, as I walked by them at a festival, but, like, Jesus, they are literally just for girls. Like, they're just such a chick band. Holy shit. Like, even if they make good music, they're labeled as a chick band for life, which sucks for them, because they actually had some good hits. Like, you know, like, they were writing similar shit to like other bands that weren't considered chick bands it was roughly about the same level of shit as like I don't know I can't give an example hey I listen to Feeder so what do I fucking know <laughs> the whitest band to have existed ever whiter than Muse maybe uh, 
like just like the most dad garage band kind of shit that you'd ever see in my life. Feeder literally started as a covers band, so it couldn't be more of like that kind of shit, you know? Anyway, waiting in a short line to get in, we finally find ourselves in a small venue with a stage at one end and a bar at the other. Most people here are got closer to a man stage than mine. I feel very out of place. My waning youth is showing. I'm aware of my mortality. Where were the good years of my life? Will Amanda still love me as we both grow older? Is C-Punk actually a genre? <laughs> Matt, you made it. A younger kid runs up and high-fives Matt. The kid runs off and Matt turns to me, shuddering. I get nervous when people surprise high-five <laughs> me. <laughs> yeah, that's scary, man. I'm like a small animal. Why would you enjoy this scene, then? Did you also enjoy curling up in a patch of sunlight to take a nap? I was doing online classes right by a window at my work one day, and this big strong beam of sunlight landed on me, and I honestly felt like I could just go to sleep. <laughs> I'm a cat. A couple other people noticed that Matt's in the crowd and yell hey as well. What a cool dad. Seems really in his element here. And turns his attention back to me. I'm so afraid of all these people. Everyone seems to like you, dude. You've got like a sick tattoo kind of like watch bracelet combo going on. You've got like cool threads. All these cool kids think you're cool. <laughs> and you're, then he's at a barbecue going, oh man, I just don't think I'm a cool dad at all. <laughs> but the coolest dad here might even out cool Craig. Because Craig's more like the sport dad who gets really into that shit later in his life and is like, yeah, and is like not necessarily cool because he's always wearing the sports gear, you know what I mean? And just way into his shakes, his protein shakes. Let's go grab a burr. Seems like you're a popular guy out here. Ah, yeah, I go to a lot of shows. This is a really cool spot. There's times like these where I realize it can only be charming and funny for about five minutes before I run out of stuff to talk about. But then I become keenly aware of where my hands are. There's no comfortable place in your mouth for your tongue to rest. <laughs> God damn it, where do I put my tongue? <laughs> See? I've known you for more than five minutes and I still think you're charming and funny. Just you wait pulls out Nazi memorabilia. <laughs> like, <laughs> we, like, the scene seems really friendly. I don't know why people wouldn't want to admit that they listen to it. Ha. Huh. <laughs> it's funny. You, me, at six are dead. <laughs> and no one cares. <laughs> Let's check out the merch. Hey. He's like younger you, Matt. Like, he's into music, and he's showing a lot of his midriff. Sir, did you know that your t-shirt is broken? You sell t-shirts, yet your t-shirt is broken. Sir! <laughs> cool do. I cannot grow my hair that long anymore. I'm depressed. Matt and I walk over to a small booth in the corner of the room where a crusty-looking teenager... Really? Oh, I guess because of the busted as Oh, what is that down in front? Ye. He guards a selection of shirts and records. He singles me out from across the room and hops up onto his chair. Step out now. Get your merch here. I got t-shirts. I got tank tops. I got all gifts and accoutrements. A descending concert go of considerable taste might want you. I gesture to myself. Me? <laughs> Flushing red. You. You look like a fella who knows their music. How's about a fine 12-inch long playing vinyl record made of and distributed by Puck? Canada's premier punk rock outfit. Tally ho good, sir. Uh, please stop yelling at me. Uh, I sense some hesitation in your voice, buddy. Let me assure you of my reputation as a salesman of the highest caliber that this record cannot and will not let you down. Okay, Pablo, calm the fuck down, sit down, have a coffee. The teen hops off his chair and takes a seat. 
you're gonna tell me this is your like other son? Because like you're too, you look closer to his age than. That would be weird. Your friend looked lost, so I figured I'd give him the old razzle dazzle. How the hell are you, Matt? You just shouted until I was like intimidated <laughs> into buying shit. That's dumb. That's not razzle dazzle. You do that thing where they high five, but also turn it into a hug. Bro hug. How's your mama? She's still single. If you want to be my dad, I could make that connect. Oh, that's so weird. <laughs> Yo, do my mom. You're so cool. <laughs> have to deal with you every single day. <laughs> Fair enough. Who's your bud? That's Captain Swagwash. Thought I'd bring out a concert pal. Pablo means close to Matt. He's not cool. <laughs> oh god, I predicted it. Is he cool? Is Captain cool? <laughs> Matt eyes me. I eye him back. He cracks a smile. Yeah. Pablo brings me in for a hug. Nah, he's not cool, man. He's actually real lame. <laughs> My dude. Not sure what to say, but give the courtesy two pats on the back, as is customary in our society for people you don't know super well, but still want to be friendly to. Pablo's a card. Kid plays a hell out of a bass. Oh, someone has to. Yeah, man. <laughs> when are we starting a witch house band? You know I'm out of the game. Oh, I'll never get out of the game. It's a shame. You know, Vacant Vale would have slayed. It'll slay once you start actually making music instead of just printing a bunch of band shirts. You got the sickest logo. While Matt and Pablo talk, I check out merch. These shirts are really nice. Looks like the opening act's coming on. Let's get a spot up close. Marsh pit, marsh pit. Band walks on stage and gives a variety of strange instruments. A harpsichord. A mandolin. Oh, so they're a gimmick band. Like, they, oh, I hate those guys. Jonathan Jones and the Speakeasy Choir. My name's Daniel. Let's start the show. Oh, no. <laughs> <coughs> what? Do they suck? Without time to respond, the band starts playing the most cacophonous noise I've ever heard. The fuck is this, dude? Why is it causing an earthquake? Matt doesn't say anything. He just hands me earplugs. Thanks. Put the earplugs in and whatever the hell is assaulting my ears gets a lot quieter. For a band this bad, they sure do seem to be having fun. Did the cellist just break his bow in half? I can get this. Actually, every time I've seen a band live, I've sat down and I thought, you know what, I can see what they're going for and they're not actually like just making noise, so I've never had this experience <laughs> before. Sometimes I just don't have any like memorable songs, and it's sometimes worse to be like mediocre than it is to be memorably bad, you know what I mean? Like, like most media. Set goes on forever, there's no breaks in the song, and I think one of the band's members' job is specifically just to burn poetry on stage. Turn to Matt and try to start a conversation. So you go to a lot of concerts out here, huh? <laughs> what? <laughs> Drop it. Can't hear me, so just stop and try to try <laughs> That's literally every festival. You're like, hey man, and he's like, what? And you're like, hey man, and he's like, what? And you're just like, okay. There's always a guy on my left, about like 45 degrees to me, that will do the ear shattering whistle, two fingers in mouth whistle, and blow my hearing out to the point I still get tinnitus in my left ear. There's always that one guy, and I always stand, no matter where I stand, he's always directly behind me. The guy who goes, beep, at every fucking show, no matter where you are, in the world, the whistling twat, who thinks he's doing everyone a favor by whistling at the, a register only dolphins care about. He will always be there, and he will always be 45 degrees below me to the left, behind me to the left, because it's always that ear that gets fucked. <laughs> so I have tinnitus now. <clears throat> also, I stood in it too next to a stack in a... <clears throat> okay, no, this is impossible. How long have they been playing the same song? 10 minutes, 20, a year? <laughs> I 
I sat. I was right at the front of a Skin Dread concert, and I was right by a stack of speakers, and that really fucked my hearing. Like the next day, all I could still hear for the rest of the day was just and like like reduced hearing for a long period of time. So I'm pretty sure I blew my eardrums out. Yeah, be careful with your hearing, guys. It actually fucks up real easy. <coughs> The drummer sprained his ankle during his saxophone solo. They promised it was partly act as he was carried off stage crying. <laughs> <coughs> Matt and I both pull our earplugs out. Comically bad band is comical. I just have a lot of questions that I know I'll never get to answer to. Oh yeah, he sprains his ankle at every show. They were being real about that. Why? Let's grab another capitalized beer. There is one brand of beer in this city, and it's beer, <laughs> with a capital B. <coughs> Matt and I work our way to the crowd and back to the bar. It's getting kind of crowded. We grow our beers. I tried to follow Matt back to our spot, but there are so many people that I'm having a hard time keeping up. As I work my way through the throngs of excited concert goers, I realize that I've lost Matt. I stop and look around, seeing nothing but a sea of hip 20-somethings. Hey, I'm a 20-something and I'm not hip. Oh, that's just my fault. <laughs> oh, I'm lost. Lost in the woods. Are there exits? What have I trapped forever? <laughs> Where would the band get back on stage? Suddenly a hand reaches out to grab me and Matt. Almost lost you, buddy. Get really nervous. The walls were closing in. <laughs> you and me both, dude. He takes my hand and leads me back towards the stage. <laughs> Why do I blush and cry all the time? Busy place, huh? Yeah, pup really brings out a crowd. So you go to concerts a lot? Yeah, it's one of my favorite things in the world. I like it too. I think it's one thing to listen to music and connect with it, but when you're in a room full of people, just, yeah, like-minded people, man. I miss festivals. I miss concerts. <laughs> Curse my tiny dad bladder. I never heard it put that way. It's really beautiful. Also, I have to pee. Hurry up, man. They're about to go on. Squeeze my way out of the crowd towards the restroom. I really should have gone before I left the house, but Amanda was watching beauty videos in the bathroom. She had an eyeliner wing going halfway across her face, which was a pretty good look. I'm so proud of her. <clears throat> I'm proud of my daughter. This is just a wholesome simulator. <laughs> like, wholesomeness. I make it to the restroom finally, but it's one of those single persons with a line forming. The band starts. Crap. People that were initially milling around the venue all crowd up against the stage. Just watch the band, man. Meet him later. <laughs> Why is this a Roblox thing now? Why do I have a hat on? Everyone's rushing up to the main stage to watch Pop play. There are a lot of different game types. Matt will be up there too. I gotta get there without being trampled by the rowdy youths. Avoid those youths! How do I avoid the youths? Go! Oh, I can use the directional keys. Oh no, I'm being jostled! Fuck! <laughs> Better lost health now. Yeah, Mosh Simulator. This is actual music. But there's music playing. I don't know if this is really punk, but okay. Fucking wrecked. <laughs> Wombo comboed over here. No! Fuck! <laughs> I miss festivals and concerts, man. Me and my friend used to do this thing, and we said that it would be like a regular thing where every summer we go to a festival, and then that we did it for 2019, and we're like, yeah, 2020, and then that fucked up. Don't know what about 2021. 
I think we just got half in there. How many... How many stages have I run by? I'm running out of time, but I don't really get where I'm going. Ah! Fuck! Not, yeah, it's not these stages. Like, I'm not just like looping repeatedly. I might be. Am I supposed to be losing this because I'm a loser or what? Oh, I just survived. Well, I didn't seem to have a health bar and I got hit a load of times. Yeah, I'm pop punk. I don't want to be pop punk. <laughs> not my favorite. Uh, <clears throat> I'm finally able to work my way through the crowd to where Matt originally was, but he's nowhere to be found. Shoot, well, I guess I should keep look. I find myself in the middle of a bunch of youths running around in a circle. Circle pit. I'm in the pit. Circle pit. How do I get out of the circle pit? <clears throat> you don't. Youth shoulders himself into me and keeps moving into a circle. Hey, I guess I'm moving in the circle too. But all I can see is an ocean of views river He's slamming. I'm about to topple. This is it. This is how I die, trampled under the boots of counterculture. Someone grabs my hand. Yay, Matt. You saved me from being murdered. You're wild, dude. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know you messed with the pit. Wall of death. <laughs> Me neither. <laughs> Can we do a wall of death in a small club like this? I'm having fun. I'm a little mad that I didn't stretch before physical activity, but I'm having fun. The song ends and the pit finally dissipates. Everybody cheers on pop. Maybe I got enough pit energy for one song. <laughs> Alright, let's retreat. We show these kids how it's done another day. Oh, I pussied out. So at the time I went to see Rise Against and all the punk guys ended up like dehydrating because they were going in absolutely wasted and I, there was this mohawk guy starting a circle pit and then we see him outside covered in a thermal blanket later vomiting his guts out because he hadn't drunk any fluids and had spent like three different band sets circle pitting and I was just like, dude, take a break. <laughs> like, Oh, that was good. Uh, Join the rest of the, the pup put on amazing set. And basically, I had to beg themselves off stage for their encore. With the concert over, the crowd starts making their way to the exit. Hey, I'll meet you outside. Go say bye to a couple of people. I hang outside. Hey, man, thanks for wa waiting. I got you a present. Matt hands me the t shirt. Whoa, you got me a t shirt. Saw you eyeballing it. And I mean, anyone who tears it up that hard on the first time back to a concert deserves a reward. The youths will finally accept me. Amanda will love this. Kind of a dick move. I'm never taking this off. I will continue to wear it until it's tattered and a little smelly so that I can treat it in body punk fashion. Hey, Matt. Hey, it's Pop. <laughs> <laughs> hey dude, I didn't realize you were here. Is he wearing a Velotak shirt? That's cool. That looks like it says Velotak. They're good, man. And I always say it wrong. It's like the Norwegian word for stranglehold. They're cool, man. Thanks. Well, see you around. That was short. Huh? Wait, you know Pop? Oh yeah, I met him a couple of times when they first started touring. Good kids. Whoa, you know Pop? Let's grab diner food. Is anything open? Mosh pits are like swimming. They do take a lot out of you, but you never realize until you're out of the mosh pit. Matt and I walk to a tiny, tiny little diner with a cute neon sign. We tear into some bacon and eggs. LP. 
elbow him in the face tattoo. Not from the tattoo, which coincidentally was red. He's lumbering towards me and there's nowhere to go. Face tattoos, man. I wish they were more acceptable in society, but people are dicks, otherwise I'd get teardrops. It's the end for me, right? Then out of nowhere I get this idea. Everyone tells me you can't get teardrops, you look ridiculous, but I'm like, I want to get teardrops, just small ones. Ivan Moody has teardrops. <laughs> like, that's someone you should be copying. Uh... <clears throat> I mean, he's okay, but he's a bit wild. Uh, well, okay being a operative word. Uh, you should have seen the look on his face. Crowd surfing. I always have. I always get run over by the crowd surfers. I bought him a beer afterwards, and we were all cool. We still follow each other on social media. He has beautiful kids. Glad you guys worked it out. Yeah, man. Just to go goes to show you that Punk's not dead, it just drives a minivan and has to hire a babysitter. How did you get to see all of these amazing concerts? I used to tour in a band. We were small, but it still got us to travel around the States. Whoa. Yeah, I mean, we were poor. We'd scrape a lot together just to survive. But I wouldn't trade those experiences for anything. That's how I knew a bunch of those people. How did you afford a, to build a mate? coffee shop business. Oh. Good vibes. Plenty of friendly people, especially at Pablo. Oh man, everybody loves Pablo. His mom's been raising him on her own. You can tell that it's been tough on both of them. I know he looks up to me, so I try and help him out whenever I can. That's really nice of you. Thanks. Us single parents, which apparently is like the majority of these people, really have to look out for each other. How's Carmen Sita? She says she wants to learn the drums. Oh boy. It'll be loud and I'll need to take a lot of aspirin, but I'll manage. Can't really blame her. I mean, why not? I'm suddenly very grateful that all my daughter's hobbies are super quiet. Whatever it is she does on the internet. I'm trying to be a supportive of Carmen Cita's rebellious phase, but I guess that kind of defeats the purpose, doesn't it? I think it would be a good daddy-daughter activity to find something to rebel against together. Like what? All of these, really. Consumerism. Why do we get up, gotta get up early the day after Thanksgiving and line up to buy things? Like, why can't we just, like, share things? <laughs> Sounds like communist propaganda, but okay. <laughs> we keep digging into our big plates of greasy diner food. The breakfast I ordered for dinner is absolutely <laughs> in the spot. Man, being a single dad is rough sometimes. It's a lonely yet common feeling. <clears throat> I understand that all too well. I mean, at least we have the rest of the dads to talk to on dad book. In this universe, it's so normal for dads to be single dads with kids and no mum around that there is straight up a separate social network built for them. Well, maybe it's just for dads in general, but like it seems like a dad, there's no mention of a mum book. <laughs> maybe there is. I get really nervous sometimes talking to people. But he's cool. Me too. I've never really considered myself an extrovert. Never really considered myself an introvert. I'm just uncomfortable anyways. You're fine. You're actually really easy to talk to, you know. I smile. We trade daughter stories. Turns out our kids are a lot alike. They're both cool. We finish up late night diners, dinner diners, and head out. I can't read. We walk back to the cul-de-sac, back to our respective houses. Snow was a blast. Man. Your arms moved. Loved it. I'm probably going to feel it in my knees in the morning. Heh. <laughs> you and me both. This concert finished quite early, I think. I don't usually like to going to these things alone. It was really cool to have you there with me. I'm glad. Alright. Call it quits for the night. Stay cool. He called me cool. Matt called me cool. 
<clears throat> I walk into the house with my heart in my throat. Amanda pops her head out. Hey, Pops, how was the show? Matt thinks I'm cool. <laughs> you don't say. <laughs> Amanda Panda, Matt thinks I'm cool. <laughs> blind leading the blind. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> wow, I just got fucking dunked. <laughs> Hey, Amanda, remind me which one of us just tore it up in the pit at a punk show, and which one of us just spent four hours probably watching Tiny House Hunting Amish Triplets Extreme Edition. <laughs> that show is a classic. Second of all, you moshed in the pit. Who are you? Who are you? I'm your extremely cool dad. All right, I'm hitting the hay, Pops. I'll see you in the pit. <laughs> Night, kiddo. That was a date? Dad points, daddy points. Oh. I've not seen. I'm glad that bar's empty. <clears throat> ah, I did better with, uh... <clears throat> did better with Craig. I B-ranked. Matt. <coughs> oh, there's a there's a group chat. You good, Damien? Well, you guys just like a symbiotic pair. Why is this? Hugo and I were planning to go to the art walk downtown. My cat says meow. Meow. <laughs> I would normally write a letter longhand, but I've run out of distressed parchment paper. You're not real. Whoa, group chats. Am I a hacker? But I don't even have a hacker Elias. The feds, <laughs> alias, <laughs> the feds are going to bust me down for my, I can't believe I've misread alias. <laughs> i got to destroy this computer. This is a group chat. Oh, thank God. Do either of you guys know how to destroy a computer? You can run Derek's boot and nuke from a startup flash drive, and once you've done that, it's best to physically destroy the platters altogether. Um, the Victorians were well versed in information security. Captain, do you want to go to see some art or not? Art is good, let's go see art. See that art! another coffee, but I've already had a coffee. It's probably a bad idea. Damien and Hugo invited me to the monthly art walk. I mean, like, there's a lot of good shit going on in this town. I mean, it makes me miss being in the West, where shit happens and is allowed to happen. You know, art, culture. Over here in China, it's literally a bunch of people saying Chinese people are very cultured and not doing anything. Like, going to work, coming home, going to work, coming home. No concerts, no art shit, nothing. Because they're very cultured already, thank you very much. And it's like, you guys have nothing in your lives. Nothing. On average, the average Chinese person does fuck all. They watch TV on the one day off they have. Then they go and work 12-hour shifts. It's fucking dank. <coughs> In a ferenti. We're here a bit early. I don't see Damien or Hugo. <coughs> Ugh, talking. Now my cat is meow. <laughs> I feel just a little uncomfortable standing around all these fancy art people. Captain. I turn around, it's Joseph. Joseph, what are you doing here? Joseph scoffs. What am I doing here? I'm obviously a huge art, uh... Appreci appreciator, appreciatrist. <laughs> okay, fine. Damien invited me to this art walk thing. I guess he invited you too. Yeah, admittedly, I'm a little out of my depth. Thank God, I thought I was going to be the odd one out. Are you allowed to say that? Say what? You know, thank God. <laughs> yeah, I actually get double points when I say it since I'm a minister. <laughs> Points get you into heaven, that's how it works. <laughs> Are you sure you're not just in a pyramid scheme? 
where are the guys? Babe, my cat's just meow all day. Why are you meow? Good eve, good eve, good eve. Evening, friends. Who's ready for some art? Art is dead and nothing is real. <laughs> you know I am. Let's be positive. <laughs> art is good and stuff. Well put, Captain. All you have to know is that if you're ever feeling overwhelmed, there's generally always a table that has free wine and cheese. I like art now. <laughs> <coughs> <clears throat> I got the table in my sights. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'm going to go help myself to some tiny wines. I should talk art. So, what's this first place? What? This particular artist specializes in landscape painting of various locales within the American Northeast. Oh. I look at the art. It is rad art. art. At the risk of sounding uninformed, do all of these landscapes look like butts to you guys? <laughs> they just straight up look to try and find the butt. <laughs> it would appear as if you are correct. Valid assessment, Captain. Hey, this art stuff's pretty easy. It gets more complicated. Sometimes the butts are more symbolic. Sometimes the butts are metaphors. Sometimes art is about the butts they don't draw. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I feel personally called out for enjoying surrealism. <laughs> Sometimes there are boobs in the picture, and it's just because they wanted to add a weird sexual element to the scene for no reason. Dolly. <laughs> like... Do you have your tiny wine? <clears throat> what I missed, butts. You missed butts. Shame. I love butts. Cheese is nice though. Shall we visit the next place? I'm really confused how everyone else is dressed in a semi kind of, that's reasonable kind of way. And we're not talking about the fact that there's only one character who screams, I'm out of a different game or a different theme. Like, Damien is just completely anti-thematic. Like, I just don't understand. Like, fine, if you want to dress like that, fine. It just seems weird, you know? Everyone else is dressed like somewhat daddishly, and he's dressed like Alucard. <laughs> like, he leaves the gallery and walk. Wow, you have more than one gallery in your city? Wow, that must feel great to have some fucking culture. <laughs> like... Oh. Jeez. What am I looking at here? Is it butts? Abstract butts. What does this art mean to you? Stare at the painting. It's a butt. <laughs> Reminds me of my childhood. Represents strife. It's a profound statement on the commonality of the struggle of survival. That's really powerful, Captain. Care to expand on it? Just kidding, it's a bunch. <laughs> With pleasure. These vivid, simple forms communicate a solemnity that is betrayed by the raw expressiveness of the brushwork, which, in a way, speaks to the essential nature of human experience. The scars left by the passage of time and the turmoil of contemporary life are both contextualized and deepened by the rose-colored echoes of pre oedipal consciousness. Slow down there, Captain. Do us a favor and keep it simple. It's a... <laughs> <laughs> you cannot escape the butt. Everyone else stares at the painting. Yeah, that's... <laughs> <laughs> I 
my <laughs> while a valid assessment I can't help feeling your initial judgment may be closer to the artist's intentions maybe you're underestimating how much the artist likes but you are a servant of the lord <laughs> we have a vampire a minister and a teacher all just like chilling we're all god's creatures even butts Comparing this piece to the artist's body of work, I'm pretty sure this represents the sense of isolation he feels creating traditional abstract artwork in a field that's repeatedly moving towards digitization. How did you figure that? That's what it says on the flag. <laughs> oh, I love doing that to people at art museums. This piece was made in 1932 and shows Degas' very interest in painting ballet dancers. Oh, that's very insightful. How do you know that? Well, it's a painting of ballet dancers, and the placard says it's in 1932, and that he liked painting ballet dancers. <coughs> and you're like... <laughs> oh. Abstract art is kind of growing on me. It's interesting that the artist chooses to not let their work be defined by what's the word? Realism? Realism. As we're looking at one of the pa paintings, a patron scoffs loudly. Psh, I could do that. Uh, Jacques? Hugo, not here. No, come back here, you ruffian. <laughs> patron walks away, not noticing humo. Humo? <laughs> Fuming? Humo fuging. Hugo fuming right next to him. You say you could do that, but you didn't. You don't seem to have the intellectual depth or the artistic skill to execute a piece even a fraction as impressive as this one. Art is the truest expression of the self, and it seems like your self is bad, so your art would be bad. <laughs> You're bad, and you should feel bad. <laughs> Hugo's insult game isn't the best, but there's no denying his passion. Damien is holding him back. Swing first, motherfucker. Friend, friend. He's not worth it. Hugo manages to cool his jets. He smooths his jacket. We all only have one outfit. I just love art. But, Pokemon. Why are you crying? Art. <laughs> we know. This is wilder than the punk show. <laughs> like, this is getting rougher than the punk show got. <laughs> you know what would ease the mood? Is it cheese? No. It's wine and <laughs> cheese. These guys are great. Co-signed. <laughs> like, like I was saying, there's really great humor to this game. I love it. The four of us head over to the wine and cheese table, which is, thankfully is grounded in realism and is actual wine and cheese. We get one last stop on the tour, you love feeding up for it? Is it gonna be butts? <laughs> it is absolutely weirder than this art. Let's do it! Surrealism, let's go! Now. Oh. Several masked performers and leotards undulate wildly on the ground, screaming both at each other and us. So, it's performance art pieces? Quick question. Shoot. What is happening? I second this question. <laughs> performance art. What does it mean? Again, I pose the very same question to you, Mr. Swagwash. They really like screaming. The very humanity of being human. Fear of existence. What do you think they're trying to say? I believe it's less about what they're saying and more about why they're saying it. I think there's something special about performance art. Almost every other form of art, music, painting, photography, <laughs> the artist uses their medium as a conduit for their emotions. With performance art, the medium is the artist. It's the purest expression of raw human emotion. It's art as catharsis. That's beautiful, Damien. 
So what you're saying is, if I start making really loud fart noises right now, it's out as long as I like really mean it. Damien fixes him with a hard stare. <laughs> I was gonna start making fart noises, but based on the look of your face, that joke isn't gonna play well with this crowd. Wise. <laughs> We watch the rest of the performance as earnestly as we can while being confused and clap politely and after the dancers scream their way off stage. <laughs> I'm arted out. Agreed. We all decide to walk home together. This is a nice, wholesome community. It's a shame there seems to be like one body type, but like fine. We make our way back to the cul-de-sac. Although actually he's a little shorter and like they actually have different heights a bit. They're not by much. <laughs> tiny wine and tiny cheese sloshing around in my stomach. I think what I've learned tonight, and not just what I've learned about art, which was nice and extremely informative, but what I've learned tonight is that when you put a bunch of tiny wine and tiny cheese together, it eventually becomes regular wine and regular cheese, followed by too much wine and too much cheese. The tiny cheese lulled me into a sense of false sense of security. I felt safe with the tiny cheese. Wax wings too close to the sun. Cheese wings? Those would melt in the sun too, and I feel like it's more appropriate imagery. <laughs> Plus it'd be delicious. A nice emmentala, possibly. Hey, if you guys were painters, what would you paint? I actually dabble in oils, of course you do. <laughs> I mostly paint landscapes, I'm not very good, but it's a nice way to pass the time. <laughs> I think I would focus on personal portraits of people in unique professions, like for example, luchadors. Okay, I think I'd paint boats, seascapes, maybe some lighthouses, mostly boats. Really? Yeah, I'm surprised you're choosing boats in favor of a long history of religious imagery and artwork. What? Boats are cool. That explains your attire. It's very boating of you. What about you, Captain? Maybe I should get a brown belt. I've been mean, thinking about, like, wearing more brown. It's a bit of an old man color, though. Tasteful nudes of the artist. Mm, food artistry landscapes. Landscapes. <laughs> I think I could examine a lot of beautiful imagery and recapture it on canvas. And I'm just kidding, it's gonna be butts. Joseph gives me a high five. We finally get to the cul-de-sac. I'm that guy that won't shut up about the bad jokes. All right, boys, good art. Good art. Agreed. See you guys around. Whether you want to or not, we're all neighbors. I head inside to deal with my inevitable cheese over. <laughs> I got males. I kind of want to know Joseph's deal. Like, first of all, I thought, oh no. And then I'm like, but his wife's weird, man. <laughs> I kind of want to know what that's about. You know, I want to know what it's about. But then at the same time, I kind of, like, I feel like if I get to know Hugo, it will unlock more about my daughter's education. Damien is just like, what the fuck? I want to know if you have a daughter or what's your deal. Fuck off, Brian. <laughs> he just really gave off a poor first impression, and now I don't want to ever speak to him, and that's real bad. These guys are, like, cool. I like hanging out with them. I haven't spoken to Robert in a while, so I feel like I should talk to Robert. Hmm. I kind of want to know shit, but like his kids are weird. His kid's annoying, but he's alright. Hmm. Well, we'll get back to that next time. I probably need to start a new session, and I need to get yet another drink, because all of this talking is a lot of text to read.